So you feel a little bit bougie in these interiors. They are just so cool. Azimut 60 Flybridge, ladies and gents, and this is Australia's number one selling Azimut. So uh, in this video, we're gonna do a, a detailed tour and see if we could find out why. But I suspect one of the main reasons, because it's something that hits me every time I get on any of their models, is these super cool interiors. The designers, they're Italian, it's an Italian brand, if you didn't already know that. Um, they just take it to another level. So that's what I'm gonna focus on this video. We're gonna get straight inside and then we're gonna to come to the exterior um, at the end of the interior tour. And because you're watching Dan's Boat Life, my name's Dan Jones, we're going for a test drive. I'm gonna to link to that at the end of this video. That's a separate video to this. G'day, good morning, welcome, wherever you're coming from. So just get on inside here. 60 foot boat, three double cabins, three toilets and a crew cabin or toy storage for a lot of the Australians. But just soak all of this up. This is what I really like about this brand. The Italians, they're just cool. They, they, they wear cool suits, they ride cool motorbikes, they got great food, and I, I feel that sense of um, coolness, is the word I'm gonna use, as soon as I come in here, because it's a boat interior like no other. Just look at the colors, look at the design, and then just feel the vibe that you get when you are on board this boat. I suspect, leave a comment if you disagree or agree, that the people who are gonna love something like this are the people who like to go out for their bougie lunches. Put on the linen, have a good time, probably do the whole European thing in Europe or Australia or America. That's the kind of person who's probably gonna really appreciate this sort of design because it is taking you into a whole nother level. So just we'll just go around this saloon and then we'll make our way forward. Look at the light fittings, look at the design of the couch here. You could easily get eight people in this space. We've got this fixed coffee table. We're on beautiful woolen carpet, sliding doors, and then moving our way over here to the starboard side. I love how we've got a different texture of the couch just here. So we've gone from the soft leather to the material and it's this like soft blue. And then it's complemented with these little golden pieces here and here. But just inside here, we've got our switch panel for all the, all the controls and our battery switches are actually external, which is a sensible place to have them. Here is a little light switch gauge, which allows you to put on whatever mood setting for the lights that you wanna have for the time. So if you're watching the TV, you just press the TV button and it dims everything so you can watch the TV that pops up just out of here, quite logical. Um, that's storage for your games and bits and pieces. We've got storage underneath this seat just here that I store. And then in terms of the headroom, I'm 5'7". Well, actually can't touch, but I can touch here because the roof line steps up when we go up the step. So let's do that. And before we get there, look at how this glossy timber has been used to separate the spaces and kind of highlight the different zones. I think that's what the designers have intended on doing, but that's the impression I get. And it's very nice just having elements of gloss and then against the mat. It's not too in your face. You know when you have all gloss, sometimes it can be a little bit too much. This feels super summery vibe is, is, is the kind of feeling that I get. So. When we coming in, hopefully you guys can appreciate this picture. The first thing that I'm drawn to, come in Pete and have a look, is this full height window. So this feels really cool. I've just come from America actually, where they've got those American diners where you sit on either side. This is like uh, way better than that. <laughs> but this table here goes up and down electrically. It's currently in this size, but you can unfold these leaves, spin it around, and then you've got a full size table. So four plus people can sit around this table for a meal. So if it's too hot outside, you can come in here and do that. And then the whole thing will go up and down electrically. We've got blinds, which will drop down. So you can cut out the sun just here. And then look at all these funky light fittings that are pointing in different directions that are gonna illuminate this area if you're doing an evening 
uh, meal. And then obviously if you wanna set those mood lights and you don't wanna have all of these down lights, you can do that too. So the head height in this part of the boat, so again, 5'7", I'm reaching my arm out. So plenty of room for the tall people and the contours of the roof are all smooth. So if you are a tall guy or girl, you're not actually gonna knock your head and hurt yourself. Now let's focus on the galley area. We've got this beautiful bench top here in the gloss, grab handle built in, not protruding, so you're not gonna wallop yourself or uh, catch your bags, your duffel bags when you're walking downstairs, so that seems quite logical. I've got opening pantry storage underneath here, so that's perfect place to store all your dry foods. And then you've got a big full-size fridge just in here, full of booze. Freezer just here, and then more storage there. Millet equipment, so we've got the dishwasher. That's camouflaged behind this one just here. And then you've got the stove, and then a four burner Millet cook thingamajiggy there with the air sucky thing. What do you call it? <laughs> what do you call them? Extractor fans, it's extractor fan. And then you've got a couple of cupboards on either side. And then your sink is just here, so this is super heavy. This is clearly some sort of stone. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't think that's Corian. That, that's very heavy. Feels like marble or stone to me. And then you've got a small sink just here. And this one here goes into some deep storage, which is good for various other items. More storage along here. And then some glassware. See how neat that's been done? I love it when they go to the extra care to do that sort of thing and this is a good place for putting phones and wallets because it's in a logical spot just there and then the texture from here forward is all darker colors so from an operational perspective it is sensible grabbing onto things you do have a, a reasonable reasonable amount of hand holds whether it's furniture or actual hand holds it's not the best but we do have a gyro stabilizer which is on right now, so it hasn't really been all that necessary, to be honest. So we went from the woolen carpet to the timber floors just here, and there's a stainless steel protector for high traffic areas. And then we get to the helm. So just have a look in here first, because this is another, when builders go to this extra level of detail, it's just nice to see, everything's protected. It's all azimut logoed, real coffee cups. You should see the coffee cups they use in America. They're like milkshake cups. That's, uh, I was loving America. It was amazing, but I was just continually surprised about how similar and how different we are, given it was my first time to visit. Big bowl storage in there. And then we've got the helm. So come in close, Pete, and we'll focus on this. First things first, you have two opening windows. So for natural ventilation on starboard, and port, the port one is actually wider and they're electrically operated. And then if you choose to drive from the lower helm, we've got uh, skipper and navigator seats, but just focusing on these seats, you actually have a footrest there and the bolster operates like so. But can you see these buttons uh, in here? So they are actually electrically operated. See that? So you can go forward and back and you can go up and down as well. So, see, see that? So that's super handy. If you're doing a long trip somewhere, you probably will see some benefit in that. Just pay attention when you're operating this one to put your hand on the cushion there so it doesn't get caught when you're pushing it up. Coming close to the helm, and we'll focus on all the uh, bits and pieces that we have here. So me at 5'7", standing on the floor, I have a clear sight line over the instrument panel. If you were much shorter than me, you might struggle. So that's when you would probably want to use this footstep just here. And then you can also use this one here. So the process would be stand there and then stand there if you need to. So just bear that in mind. Again, the, the head height is exceptional. It's fine for tall people, but it's better for the, for the skipper because the roof line drops down a little bit here for the navigator. So uh, you're probably not gonna need to stand up as a navigator, so I don't think that really matters for you. In terms of the 
display what we have here is a Raymarine screen on starboard and port multifunctional of course we're running the d13 900 horsepower there on a straight shaft with bow and stern thrusters this is our digital diagnostics rudder angle indicator all the usual information including fuel flow and range and hours depending it calculates it with your speed so it tells you how much left you have to go air conditioning which would be necessary with the heat load from glass on an angle like this so that's quite useful all our boat systems just here all the usual stuff uh, just want to point out you've got the red light here and the white light there it's nice having that on a separate button because at night time you might need to reach for it so that's logical uh, electronic start for the Volvo Penta not IPS I've mentioned it's a shaft drive boat it actually has the thrusters operational so come in here close Pete I'll just explain this um, this button here allows you to steer with joysticks so if you're on a long passage just allows you to relax a little bit more basically this button here just activates the thrusters so if you wanted to just operate the boat side slip it with the thrusters you can do that and then this button here does engines thrusters and rudders as well so the rudders will go independently in different directions to uh, just send your prop wash out in a different direction to aid the thrust with the thrusters and slip the boat sideways just down here on this panel here is the sea keeper control we got our spotlight just here that's the fire or set fire boy system uh, that's your plug-in for your memory for the for the uh, chart plotter digital throttles trim assist on this boat you select station whether you're going to be downstairs or upstairs by just pressing this button neutral low speed single lever you may use that when you're in uh, some rough water as well this boat's got a buy data just here so we've got speed and depth just there and we've got uh, do we have uh, a rudder as well oh, sorry compass we have a manual compass just up there and the screens a touch screen but we have a uh, control keypad just there and just pay attention to the azimuth wheel it's lovely leather wrapped quite large looks a bit unique the logo does turn upside down when you turn the wheel so if you're finicky now nah, well too bad <laughs> so a couple of windscreen wipers i do note that they're stainless steel so they're actually going to last as opposed to the mild steel ones and we've got ac outlets here so that's going to keep the windscreens from fogging up in the wrong conditions come straight down let's look at the stainless steel for the high traffic areas again stainless steel there now we're on to the lovely soft woolen carpet i have the gen set running i've got the gyro on and i have all the ac on so this is going to be the noise levels you experience with everything running and we have approximately 15 to 18 knots of wind blowing straight at us right now so we do have some waves hitting the hull so this is essentially what we, what it will be like come forward how do you feel is this cool like i i think the way the azimut designers who all have cool names it's like stefano or something i don't know any of these guys i'm just imagining them having long hair and cool sunglasses and some suit jacket that we can't get in sydney but they they managed to put all of these really nice curves which when you think about a construction process when you go and visit factories you're just adding work the more curves and the more intricate design pieces that you put into the interior of a boat the more time and the more cost it requires to put it together so um, when you've seen enough of that you begin to appreciate that someone's really had to put a lot of care and attention into creating this interior so we've got an exit hatch just here you actually have storage for your bags i think if you're flying into your boat um, always try and select duffel bags like that if you're going on a boat holiday the hard case bags are not a good idea with uh you know delicate um you know expensive interiors obviously they'll stand up to it i'm just suggesting that's a better way to do it we've got two of these on either side ac outlets which are quite useful today above us we have our charging phone pad just there light control natural ventilation here i suppose you could probably also do it uh, via the escape hatch as well gold detailing in here these same material drop down blinds and then hanging just here and i'll close this because we can't miss this cool mirror and 
more hanging, dual hanging. So we'll check out on that side whether there's shelves or not. But see how the mirror protrudes from the wall and they've just turned it into a bit of a statement piece as opposed to slapping a mirror on the wall like most builders would do. And also look at these door handles. See how they've like nicely shaped and they look super funky with the indent just there. It's just typical azimuth stuff, I feel. So here's the shelves on this side. And then we have access into our private head, which I've just caught on the carpet because I slid on the carpet. There we go. Come on in. So we've got our own shower in this one. We've got a proper glass shower door and then really nice tap where it's all stainless steel goes up and down. I can see an extractor thingamajigs just there, but you've also come in here, Pete, and we'll just show everyone you've got a proper port. These are all the way around the boat so you can get some air out. And we have got a blind, which is uh, water resistant for privacy. But look, remember how I was talking about curves? See this? So once again, someone put some care and attention into this little seat here. This is not real wood, this is flexi teak. So that's fine with moisture and it's gonna last ages. And then we've got little vanity, storage, storage, super cool lights and this timber finish framing the whole thing. Again, some Italians thought about that. So that's just super cool. Let's come in here into the kiddies cabin and it feels pretty big actually. I guess we are on a 60 foot boat, so it should, but heaps of headroom, nice views out the windows. You've got storage in both of these, more curves everywhere, soft finishings here. So you're gonna be comfortable if the kids are having pillow fights, they won't hurt themselves. And then you've got, this should be the hanging storage in here with a mirror. That one doesn't appear to have a light in it like all the others do. AC controls in all the cabins. And then out here, those kids, okay, I'm gonna have to stick that carpet down. Um, those kids, they don't have a private toilet, it's actually the day head. So everybody shares the day head through the day and it's the kids toilet at night. But you see the gold details just there. And this time, rather than having a separate shower like we did in the VIP, we have the lift up thingamajiggy over the loo. And then it's also the shower. So you keep the loo dry with that down when you are actually having a shower, but it's all combined to make the best use of the space. This looks like marble or real stone. I don't think this is Corian. It's what we saw upstairs. This is more expensive for sure. Stainless steel, storage behind. You've got more than enough space for people's toiletries bags. If you're having a holiday, everyone can just load them in there. And if you are staying a decent amount, I'll just close this door. If you are staying a decent amount of time on the boat, you're gonna to need to do some clothes washing. So they have thought of that. Does this slide in? I think it might. Yes, it does. So that's good. That's super handy. Is it a, uh, yep, it's a Hoover washer and dry. So you can do wash and dry your clothes in there. Obviously 240, so that'll be off the jetty. But come on into the master. This is cool. Just pan around. The, the windows here are cool. Yeah, it's step, Pete. <laughs> so, this is your view, guys. The, uh, the positioning of this bed is quite luxurious because you've got that beautiful window behind the bed head. So you can still sit up in bed and then your view out is through these wonderful big windows. You can have them open if you want the breeze um, and some cross flow ventilation. But just look at all these little details, whether it's the golden uh, like thing holding up the, the, the lampshade and this place to put your phones, the handles, the curves. It's just cool. And just once again, see this timber? Just a, a, a little use of high gloss. I'm guessing this is mahogany. Um, it just looks cool. It, it, it's kind of like turned this bed into a statement piece and it draws your eyes in here and you're gonna to have to remember to make the bed. Otherwise it'd be really embarrassing if you come show off this area and that's not like this because it probably should be. But I discovered something before. So in the morning, you're probably gonna to wanna to check your emails and uh, maybe just, uh, yeah, you don't wanna hang out with everyone else. Check this out. How cool is this? So with the stabilizer on, your laptop can sit here, your coffee can sit there, you're not gonna spill a thing and you can be in your own space organizing your day and doing your thing. You've got an optional pop-up TV if you wanna turn that into an entertainment space. You've got his and hers 
drawers just here so all your swimmers and your your linen you're gonna have a lot of linen if you are who I think you are uh, is gonna go in there I guess you're, you're gonna have cool shoes too I guess you'll put them in here you'll probably have cool shoes in there and then you've got more storage okay this is where you're gonna hang your dresses I think that's gonna be for the girls and this will be okay that's shorter so that's gonna be sports coats in there and you're probably gonna have to hang your oh, okay we've got a safe we got a safe so you'll probably do t-shirts and shorts in there and we've even got some more storage boxes behind here and curves details everywhere we look there are a few stairs ups and downs which is them trying to maximize the headroom so you will have to pay attention to that um, but you're not going to be trying to talk to a camera so it shouldn't be a problem because you've got a step here as well essentially they're thinking about the tall americans and the germans uh, they're not thinking about the dance because they don't need to because i always have a headroom <laughs> but anyway come in here so now we are moving aft this is your private head for the master we've got a much bigger vanity here we've got storage storage up here you put all your fancy things we've got a drawer back here so you're probably going to even store a few uh bath towels and that sort of thing we have the blind for privacy and just give me the camera p um you've got your own super nice shower look at that and see the curve see what i was talking about so this is more of that flexi teak and then the lovely shower head that's really high quality stainless steel glassed door just there it's not plastic and then i'll give that back to you pete and i just want to point out once again see this theme just a little use of high gloss mahogany framing this and with these lights it's just it's an experience if you appreciate this sort of thing if you are who i think you are you probably have super bougie furniture at home um this is where an azimut is going to be of you know a great deal of appeal to you so did i forget something there pete uh, only that that can rip up oh my god <laughs> oh you know what i've done this before so this is why i need a woman to come and film with me i keep thinking everything's for laptops so <laughs> girls it's a makeup station i had no idea did you come, come around did, did we see that yeah, kid come and have a look well, let's so really girls if you're watching put put comments in the description below whatever you put in here and there um i don't i don't actually know you can tell i'm not married but you've got a mirror here as well maybe it needs a light maybe maybe there's a maybe there's a cool light that's been wrapped in mahogany that sits next to that i don't know um, i see another drawer there super funky light there let's head upstairs and now i'm going to show you the entertainment space out back because uh, it's pretty cool and what Azimut do on every model now they build their top sides so the superstructures out of carbon fiber so the the hull and the primary construction is normal GRP so we're keeping our weight down low and where it's supposed to be but due to the advantages of strength and less weight with carbon fiber we can put more real estate upstairs so keep watching because the flybridge is amazing just come around here first. So we've got this U-shaped -shape, U seating around this fixed table. I think this is an upgrade. This is that same nice stone um, that I saw inside. So this feels pretty heavy. We're wrapped in teak and the angle of this seat is such that you will probably fall asleep here of an afternoon with the throw cushions. Put your feet up there if you wish, but quite a few people will sit around here and have lunch. And I say, you're probably gonna do that more often than not because look at the roof protection so see how it comes all the way to here so you're always going to be protected from the hot high midday sun and have rain protection at all times and we even have a, an electronic drop down sunshade just here so when the sun is going down of an arvo um, you know when it's belting into the boat and it's getting too hot you can knock that out so that's quite handy and if you're the sort of person who hangs on your boat at the marina you've got a little bit of privacy as well so that's also something that may or, or may not appeal to you I know the Europeans do a lot more of that so uh, that's very important for everyone in Europe so we've just got some on a gas strut storage for the covers there is 
sensibly placed lockers all around the decks for ropes, covers and fenders. So we'll go around and point them out as best as we can. I need to put my sunnies on. Engine access is in here. We're gonna do that at the end. So just keep watching. I've got more stone inserts just here, stone drink holders. We've got a, a bar fridge just out here. We're on the teak, as you can see. I don't think anything's under there because that's the crew cabin. We've got nice down lights above the table which are gonna illuminate this whole area. And we'll just walk around and try and point everything out. We have uh, opening doors on port and starboard. You just pull it and then move it across like that and it's an outwards opening. So it doesn't actually hinder your access like those inward opening ones can do. So that's kind of handy. This is the winch if you need to pull yourself into the dock in Europe. That's breaker storage uh, location just there for shore power but it's also handy for a few lines cleats nice stainless steel leading to the cleats kid and doggy door good chunky solid ones just there and shore power one and two cables just connected in here with a cutout so the cable will run and you can leave the door closed um, we've got our hot and cold shower just here I'm surprised they've gone with the plastic jobby when everything else is so fancy. So if I'm gonna knock you as what, I'm gonna knock you for that. So anyway, not the end of the world. Um, and this is a town water inlet connection just here, and then onto the swim platform. Not the biggest swim platform in the world, but I think that's because um, we have the biggest fly bridge. <laughs> That's probably why they've done this. We, this is a hydraulic drop down. We can do tender deployment. These slots in here will allow for air to pass through when you're in a wavy location. We are actually in a slightly wavy location, but we've got the stabilizer on, so it doesn't matter. So, uh, you know what? I'm gonna come back to these because I'll set off the alarm if I open that up right now. So we'll do that at the end when we uh, go and have a look at the engine room. But we have fender storage in here single crew cabin with toilet shower and a decent amount of storage just in there if you were going to run it with a captain so that looks like black water uh okay so i'm not exactly sure that what that is could be black water that is a rope storage just there sensibly located this is operation for the platform um, this is uh, more rope storage and then we've got manual bilge pump operation in there we have another winch it's foot control just here but focus your eyes on this that is a really good location for your battery switches i like it when they think about the your operation of the vessel um, from day to day perspective so that's kind of cool let's go on the bow and then we'll go to the flybridge you could grab hold grab hold go up some stairs one thing i did notice today during the testing if you are dodgy on your feet or old probably don't come up here when the boat's underway. If you're young and nimble, don't worry. Uh, the reason I say that is when you get to here, if you were taller than me, you're gonna, you may wanna naturally grab onto something here and there's not really much to grab. So the solution is to slide or slide along the rail or hold onto it. And then when you get here, you've got more things to hold onto, but just pay attention to that. Don't go sending someone who's not so sure-footed up here while the boat's underway. So this area is cool. You can just picture yourself having a great time up here. We've got a super bougie sun lounge, forward facing seats, but this is what I noticed that I thought was just great. So with that much work, I now have, boom, boom, this super cool hangout area with a drinks location just there. And don't worry, this foam doesn't sit on the timber. It actually sits on this metal so it's not coming in contact so if it were to rain it's not going to soak it and also this foam is closed cell foam you do actually need to check that not all manufacturers use closed cell foam in their cushions would you believe that's kind of bad like you do want closed cell foam on cushions that are going to be outside because of rain but obviously but not everyone's got that yet ah so this is storage for covers so we have one on either side you might get a small fender in here if you're lucky but obviously you're going to be covering this area here and it's nice to not have to drag the covers all the way to the back of the boat drink holders on either side these slots in here there's four of them there's carbon fiber poles which are stored down in the crew cabin uh, they could slot in there there and there and this whole area can be 
shaded with a mesh sunshade. So that's handy for that. So uh, I mentioned the two lockers where you can put the covers, but you, down in here, I'll open one of them. You Obviously it's a chain locker, but there is storage space for large fenders. So I would be putting um, large fenders here, here and down aft where you can get three or four more large fenders and then if you have any extra ones or funny shaped ones I'd put them in the crew cabin um, and it's nice to be able to spread those fenders from uh, forward to aft so you're not having to walk 60 feet every time because it's just a big boat so that closes there a couple of cleats quick anchor windlass operated from the helm operated from here and we do have a fresh water or is it fresh or raw is it fresh or raw, raw water do you reckon Raw water, it makes sense to do raw, yeah. so, so a chain wash is what I'm trying to say. Uh, single bow roller, stainless steel, centrally mounted onto a gal anchor. Um, I'm sure you can change it to stainless steel if that's important to you. And also just pay attention to the design, I'll use drone shots for this, of this bow. They have flared out on the deck, so got a nice cutting angle, and they've flared out on the deck, which allows us to get more usable space up here, up the front, but it also, it deflects some wash. So if you're going through some decent size waves and they come up this high, this flare is gonna send that wash out. It's gonna keep the people up here mostly dry. So you can uh, get along at a bit of a clip and people will still be okay. I'm just trying to, I didn't look at this. What's that for? Oh, you put that down when the cover's on. Okay, that makes sense. So the covers can be all flush and the rainwater can run off. Stainless steel, that's good. There's our spotlight just there. And coming down one step just here and see how the railing just changes angle there. And from here to there is where I was saying, just be careful if you're not good on your feet. Two diesel tanks, 2,800 litres total. So I'd assume uh, divide that by two and then you have your fill ups here, same place on the other side. And for any spills, it actually has a catcher just there. So I assume that doesn't go out into the environment Navigation lights just here. Now we have a grab handle just here and you're going down these two steps like so. So, time to get up on the flybridge, come on. Let's just, oh, shoe storage, that's good for your thongs. So that's good. And then I like having the stairs um, essentially inboard and in a safe location like this. So you've got a grab handle, grab handle, and then you've got more grab handles when you come up here. So this is one that you can transit when you are underway and here just get all this in pete this is this is epic we're on a 60 foot boat it feels a lot bigger having this much space available to us this high is a real advantage and like i was saying before oh that's super comfy how cool is the furniture just whoever's designing this it's super bougie and you feel great. You've got this cute little table. We're carrying that stone theme once again through the boat. That's wrapped in teak. This design's just wonderful. This, this is actually the most comfortable one that I've sat on so far. Um, all these railings are fixed, but are a sensible height. The boat's not rocking around because we've got the lightweight carbon fiber keeping our center of gravity, and then we're complementing it with the gyro. We've got this sunshade, which deploys out to about this location here. So you still can knock out sun. It's not full beam, but it's pretty close as you can see. And then our head height is immense when we get in here. So this, ladies and gents, is gonna be another super nice place to enjoy your lunch. You know, with that gyro, with the Jenny, you are gonna be comfortable. So you can come up here in all conditions, just enjoy the breeze blowing across the deck and have a good time once again same stone that i note one small step here and barbie just in here L little barbie for australian standards but it'll do and that looks like i think that's cold water only i think it's oh it's hot and cold oh cool okay that's funny all right and then another fridge a little bin just in here and there was a bin with recycling down in the galley i just didn't open everything because Sometimes you guys tell me it gets boring in the comments if I open everything, so I'm listening. Um, that's an ice maker, just in there. That's an ice maker. So come up and have a look at the second helm station. Now, we're on the port side. So we've gone from starboard downstairs to port 
up aloft. So we have more visibility on port here, more visibility on starboard there. We've got a repeat of most of the controls up here. There's your quick anchor windlass, there's your buy data, there's your systems, keypad, touchscreen, um, uh, engine diagnostics. The Volvo Penta start stop can be operated from here. The joystick best done with your left hand, throttles obviously with your left hand. We've got a charger just here for some phones and we've got a VHF. Now, one thing that I wanna point out guys, and I, I did also point this out in the other video, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself because you watch both. Just look aft, uh, Pete, point the camera aft and just let everyone see that view. So it is very nice and you can imagine the girls hanging out in Sun Lounge, it's gonna be great. But your visibility from this helm to the platform is not ideal. So what do I want you to do if you are ordering this boat? Just put a reverse camera uh, at the back there that comes up on this screen just here. So as long as you've got a reverse camera, you're fine. You can obviously go one step further and do yacht controller as well. Um, if you have crew, you can communicate, but I'm just trying to think about those of you who want to operate this boat in a solo fashion. So next thing is, look at all the shade we're being given by this roof going all the way forward. We've got a couple of down lights just here. We've got more down lights around of so an evening. This can be super cool. We've got this beautiful Italian seat lounge. Don't know what you, there's probably a fancy name for this but that's great and it's very, very deep. So that's gonna be nice underway and great at rest. And Pete, you've beaten me to it. We've got this awesome retractable sunshade. So this time of year, we're probably actually not gonna use this very much. We'll just burn our faces off. But in winter, this would be great. This would be awesome. And just, just look at the design. Just see how this, oh, step, yep. I'll get used to it. See how this pillar here is on this angle. That's typical azimut because they've quite a uh, striking looking design. And then they've supported it with this forward facing stainless steel. What that means for you as a driver, as an operator from the flybridge, your visibility is not hindered at all. So you can see everything. So if you're driving for enjoyment, which I should suggest you should look at an azimut if that's what you want because these are really enjoyable, fun boats to drive. If you turn that gyro off, you let the boat lean into the turns, they're just fun. So if that's what you're looking for, you are gonna achieve that up here at this helm. Let's keep it moving, let's go downstairs. By the way, you can close this door. So if grandma has come boating with you, you don't wanna drop her down the stairs, you can close that, or kids or dogs or whatever. So, engine hatch. Okay, if I was gonna knock them, I'd also knock the, the, the placement of this, this handle because you kind of got to do leg spread to operate it. So not the end of the world, but it is what it is. So Jenny's on, gyro's on, so we have noise. Obviously it's a new boat, so we've still got tape on the stairs. I might just grab the camera off you, Pete. You guys come down with me. So generator is centrally mounted and we are a shaft drive boat, guys. So this is the D13 900 horsepower on port. And this is same thing on starboard. And can you see the straight shaft just poking underneath that checker plate there? We've got the center line and Fireboy system, extractor fans. Here's the fuel tank. That looks like a metal tank. Note that we have a sight gauge on it just there. Bow thruster switch batteries, mufflers, power distribution, nanny, jenny just there, more batteries, dual filters with a switch over on either side and the sea keeper on the center line. So nicely protected and away from everything. So that's handy. Now Pete, just grab that off me and we'll go straight to the crew quarters. I was just doing it that way because I, there's an alarm, which is quite sensible. You go down that way, Pete, and I'll go this way. So if you're at the helm and you open, drop the platform or open any of these doors, it will sound an alarm, which you have to acknowledge, which is kind of sensible because you don't really want people out here uh, when you're belting along at 31 knots. That's the fender storage I was talking about. Beautifully mounted and wrapped in stainless, nicely finished, high quality stuff like that. 
proper handle. And this, ladies and gents, is where you put the naughty children. And come on down. But don't worry, they can get out. So it's not that much of a punishment. So it's a single berth just in here. Um, and you've got a reading light, you've got power, and this is not a berth, I don't suspect it is. This looks like a storage ledge, a place for ropes, probably you'd store a lot of alcohol, foodstuffs, that sort of thing if you're having, uh, if you're entertaining. And then you've actually got the 240, A240 switch panel just there, and then storage for the cruise luggage, and your own proper toilet, shower, see the oh, alcohol, see? I guessed it. Um, and little vanity just there. So that's kind of everything you need. Obviously a lot of a lot of us Aussies don't run with crew, so it's just a great place. You know, if, you, if you're doing the foiling wing dingers, if you like to fish or inflatable toys, they're all gonna go really nicely in there and then you can have your tender on the platform just here and just pay attention to where you mount it so this door can still open when the tender is in the chocks. So that's all you have to think about. So I think that's a boat, guys. Um, number one Australian, one number one selling azimuth in Australia was what I was trying to say. What do you think? Do you see why it is the case? Do you see maybe some appeal to shaft drives or is it all of this real estate? I personally think it's probably a bit of everything because it, it does tick a lot of boxes for a lot of you. It's a boat that with the right skill set, you can run this thing by yourself. You can take a lot of people out for the day and you can have a really awesome long weekend staying on board. And it's an azimuth, it's a bit of an icon, it's very striking to look at, they're a very good looking thing. And those interiors, to me, are just gorgeous. That really is where the Italians have their own little secret sauce that most people can't seem to grasp, including many of us Aussies. You guys in Italy are doing such a good job. I love seeing that replicated here on boats that we can get down under. So now if you really like this boat and you wanna come for a test drive, we're doing that right now, um, click on the link, it's up on the screen right now. My name is Dan Jones, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.